Well, I, I, I hope I hope I hope you can edit this down to at least five minutes of uh, usable nonsense. Welcome back to the Bresnik's cast. We are now on episode 12, and frankly, this one is a belter. So I talked to Joe Thompson from the band Hey Colossus, and as usual on this show, the tangents flowed, and we got into some really interesting topics, and it was all in a good banter mode, so I think you're really going to enjoy it. Now, I usually ask the band uh, what songs they want played, you know, at the start and the end, but Joe gave me permission to choose the ones for this episode. I even have proof, which I'll play you now. You choose. You choose. You choose the music. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Makes no odds to me. And um, same with pictures and words. I don't care. Just do what do what you think's right. Anyway, <laughs> this is a great conversation we had. It's insightful and it's a laugh all at the same time. But before we get into it. Let's listen to some Hey Colossus to get us in the mood. So from the album The Guillotine, this is Englishman.
So I am here with Joe Thompson from the excellent Hey Colossus. Joe, thanks for coming on the show. No, no problems. So Joe, I always kind of start this way, start all the shows this way when I have a guest on for the first time. Why don't you tell us a bit about yourself and how you came to be with Hey Colossus? Uh, yeah, uh, we we started in 2003. Uh, there's uh, There was five of us at the time. Uh, myself and Bob are the uh, only people left standing from that era. And um, Bob and I went to nursery school together. So I've known him... I've known him longer than I've known my brother. Um, And, uh, yeah, we just have always played music together. We were in our first band together when we were 12. And uh, we did Dire Straits covers. (laughs) And, uh, yeah, yeah. (laughs) you can laugh. (laughs) No, Um, I think that's good. Hey, hey, uh, they had some good songs. (laughs) Mark Knopfler's from Glasgow. (laughs) I thought it was Newcastle. I get told it was Glasgow. I'm Googling that. But anyway, sorry to interrupt. Continue while, continue while I Google. <laughs> no, 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 no. I know. I like, uh, I like, I like some dire straits knowledge as much as an X man. Don't worry about that. Um, what we were, we were, we're, so that was super young. Like we're, when was that? That was about 80, 986. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and then we did a more like indie punky band for about 10 years. Uh, and we ran our own little record label and um, got lucky with some stuff like John Peel and things like that. And then around 2003, my brother, who was the drummer in that band, moved to Brisbane. So we stopped that band and decided to do a new one. Uh, so we put a advert on the um, Fracture Forum, if you remember that. Do you remember that fanzine magazine? Oh, vaguely, it was like a yeah. punky sort of magazine. I vaguely, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, they had, yeah. Well, they had a forum back when people looked at forums, <laughs> and uh, we put an advert on, on on that in around 2003, and uh, got three people in, or two of which we knew anyway, and then one extra person, and then the five of us had our first rehearsal June 2003, first gig September 2003, and then since then we've released as much as possible. <laughs> yes. <laughs> And to clean up the Mark Knopfler question, okay, we're both right. He was from Wikipedia. He was born in Glasgow but raised near Newcastle, so we were both. Ah, right. there you go. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, that's good. Yeah, I'm glad neither of us can be unhappy. That's nice. Right. Well, let, let's not let's not dwell on Mark so, yeah, Knopfler. But like, <laughs> but like you know, when when we were twelve, like in the mid '80s, you just played rock, like you know. Whatever, it's fine. I got no, I got no shame. Hey, I wasn't slagging you off, man. I like about, I like as much Dire Straits as the next man. Yeah, don't worry about it. It's cool. It's all right. It's fine. <laughs> now, to be honest, we couldn't play it. It was too complicated. I know that so, was. Uh, that's why yeah. you. Yes, that's why you do Ramones covers because it's much easier. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, but right back to you. This show should just be called the Tangent Cast because I always go off in tangents with people. But, um. Right, the guillotine. Your most recent album came out twenty seventeen. For a start, why why the guillotine? Yeah, I think um, well, Paul wrote. Paul's the lyric man, and we sort of try and normally let him uh give things names. And it was it was for us. It was a fairly uh political record, I guess. So. The guillotine makes sense because, <laughs> um, you know, like it's just all the, 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 the shambles of the last few years. I don't know. You couldn't help be. I don't I think most bands couldn't help be. Uh, affected by it one way or another. Do you know, what I mean, I don't think we're the only ones to have done it over the last couple of years, like the Nod record, for instance. Um, yeah. But you, you couldn't help it. So. Yeah, and it's it's quite an interesting album for you guys as well. I mean, like, the way when I first listened to it, it was like, you know, like, obviously you've got, like, Honest to God, and then you've got, like, Back in the Room, which is like, you know, it kind of feels like you're sort of verging on the edge of sanity listening to it, and then, like, 
as soon as like the the madness of like the crescendo of back in the remains, you have this kind of like when you get into a thing that um Gallanter boy, it's like the relief that comes, you know, like after all that insanity <laughs> of back in the room. Um was was that Nick Turner from Hawkwind, wasn't it, that played saxophone in back in the room? Yeah. Yeah, it was. That um came about because um uh this is the this is the story is reese a drummer his family are from um like uh south wales um right in the far corner of wales and uh reese has got a kid and his kid was at his as at reese's parents house and reese went to pick him up and there was this old boy there and Reese's mum was like, oh, like, this is this is Nick. He's come to pick up his grandson. They've been playing together, like Winston and this guy's grandson. <laughs> and like Reese's like, like, that's just like not just Nick. <laughs> Do you know? What I mean? <laughs> like, that's like Nick, t- you know. So, so, <laughs> so they just got talking and, and they met because of Reese's son, Winston, and nick's grandson <laughs> you know so they just got friendly and it just happened like that and you know he's a he sent oh he, we sent him the track and he covered it in about five or six layers of saxophone like from start to finish like wailed the way over it and uh it got edited down but i think i'd love one day for the uh full saxophone uh, version to come out because uh, it was pretty. Um, you thought you thought that version on the record was full on. <laughs> Holy crap! <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because like in this album, there's even songs like Englishman and stuff like that, and it's kind of like more lyric driven, and it's almost like I kind of hear it like to be kind of a bit more crisper and melodic, you know, compared to a lot of the stuff you guys have done in the past. Yeah, I, I'm sort of. Like, uh, uh, some people sort of say, like, XTC the place in certain places. And I've, I've, like, I sort of believe that a band like Fugazi is essentially the police. Like, if you, if you listen to a Fugazi, yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I'm listening. You've just bought 10 minutes of my time. (laughs) If you listen to, a lot of the Fugazi rhythms and the way they move around and then put away any uh, anti-sting feeling you've got, of which you probably have some. Yeah, my guess is you have some. Um, <laughs> well, I only guess you have some because it seems everyone has some. Well, come on. If you sting. forget that, if you forget that. You can, yeah, I know. Uh, well, no, I, like, no, I, I'm with you. OK, so you sort of have to forget. <laughs> You know all the sh- the, the, the post shenanigans musically and sexually, <laughs> and think about the way they move their rhythms around, and then listen to Fugazi again. Oh, like you know, I, you'd be surprised. Give yourself a minute later and uh, go for it. <laughs> but anyhow, my point is is that songs like Englishman or Experts Toll or whatever that off the off that record, like you know. You know, we all grew up. If we grow up listening to Dire Straits, you grow up also listening to the Police and stuff. And I don't see any, you know, shame in it. And, and like, and and I think that a band like Fugazi would have as well. If you, you know, they're saying the Ruts or whatever. They're they're, very, they're not dissimilar. They aren't. It's just one slightly more polished. Yeah, and actually, I think I know exactly what you mean because I've talked to. I was talking on a previous show. I can't even remember which one it was, but I was talking about how when I listen to, for example, System of a Down, I hear Black Sabbath uh, because the way they yeah. structure the songs, the way they like they will break off and bring the riff in, and then the rest of the band, the rhythm section, will join in the riff. Just the way they do it, and that I can tell. Like actually, then like I'd heard them years ago when I was younger when they first came out, and then I thought. Get, it kind of reminded me of the Black Sabbath thing, and then I looked up and I found out they were influenced by Black Sabbath. So I know what you mean. So it's something about the way they construct the music where you can you can hear it. Yeah, no, totally. You look at there's footage on uh, like YouTube and whatnot of the police playing CBGBs, 
And, and honestly, if, if it wasn't for the fact that Sting went on to do what he did and, you know, then pl- the police became absolutely enormous. You know, if they would have, you know, stayed down at that level, people would be talking about them now and, you know, in a different way. I don't know. We like them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's interesting, but I like these, I like these kind of abstract musical discussions I do. I mean, I remember there was a Billy Corgan quote when he, he said to Peter Hook, um, like Joy Division or a me- uh, Joy Division were a metal band, and Pete, he said that Peter Hook knew what he meant. Yeah, yeah. Well, like you know, the the, the boundaries shouldn't be there, you know. And and I like as a band who sort of has sort of genre skipped a little bit in terms of like early on being quite hefty and you know drony and whatnot. And I don't know. I don't see any shame in it. I you know I think it's. Healthy, and I, and I also think that any band that sticks doing the same music for what we've been going for about 14 years, any band that's been going for that long who is still doing exactly what they were doing at the beginning, is lying. Yes, I, honestly, I think they're I think they're they're lying, and I, and I think and they're not to be trusted with your children <laughs> or or even the TV. Remote. You, you don't give them anything. Because they're lying. No, but so. I think you're so right because how how what these big bands you hear and they make the same shit album every fucking year. Like my brother is like enamored with you too. He fucking loves you too. And you know maybe they went through slightly different periods. They're not as inane as some of the other bands I can think of that like fucking mm. cool play. But like. See, like, the funny thing is, Coldplay started off pr- kind of interesting and got progressively worse, the scientist excluded. But yeah. I know what you mean, like, there is this kind of <laughs> thing that there's some bands and it's just like, it's just, let's just churn out the next album. And it's like, uh, when it's the same thing, I mean, you lose all interest. The most interesting bands I've ever heard are bands that have, like, ex- like moved into different genres. Bands that if you were, you can't just say this is a, like, a punk band or a, a this or that band. You know, the most interesting bands are, like, well, they've done, you know, it's, it's bigger. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's, I think it's, I think you've got to mix it up. You have to. Absolutely. And we were talking about Englishman and, I've got to be honest, show what the fuck is going on with that video? That video is fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good, isn't it? It's really good. I love yeah, it. I was Paul, meant to. <laughs> well, I, I, I can, you know, I wasn't involved in the making of it, but Paul, the singer, is, and uh, a couple of his friends, and uh, Paul's wife helped as well, and and they did it up in some woods down in South London, and. Uh, and I just think one of them wanted to wear a Morris dancer's outfit, basically. So <laughs> they had skipped around some woods for a bit. <laughs> but like it, you know, it's 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 the disintegration of uh, the uh, old school English person who is, um, you know, convinced that this land is his. And you know, you know, fuck those people. You know, like they just need to. You know, you got to move on. Like times are different. So, like, where do you get gl- where do you get glitter acid? Where, where's the glitter? <laughs> Art shops. I've never seen glitter acid before. I've seen it in other forms, but. <laughs> oh, but um, we digress again. But that's what this show is all about. That's the whole point. That's why I like this better than sort of your print interview because I just like to have the banter with someone, you know. Mm. Well. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Hey, it's fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. You're great. You're a great guest. I'm enjoying it. <laughs> I really am. So, <laughs> you make me laugh there, right? So, Go, well, I tell you what. What's your what's your story? What's your story then? My story is unimportant. I'm one of those kind of guys. It's not that important. You'll find out. You'll find out soon enough. Believe me, you'll find out. <laughs> so. <laughs> I want to talk about in memory of Uri Klangers, right? Because there is actually kind of an interesting story behind that. Tell us about that. Uh, the uh, the dedicated to Uri Klangers uh, album I, is what you're talking about, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Uh, yeah, that is a uh, that came out on cassette in 2013, uh, um, and we just made them for one show. 
it was like our 10th anniversary show in London. And we made um, as many cassettes as were needed for the night. And uh, the people who came could have one. And then, um, yeah, and it was like a best of of the first 10 years in our own mind. And, uh, and arguably there's better or worse songs, but I don't know. We, they, that, that's just what happened on them. And then, um, uh, like about three years later, uh, the label MIE, who released, um, uh, like a, um, the, uh, the album that we released around 2013, Cuckoo, Live Life Like Cuckoo, he got in touch in about 2016 and said, um, that his cassette copy of that compilation album was broken. Um, and could you release it on vinyl? So that's what happened. So when was it? Like last year, I think it came out. Yeah, it was late it just 2016. I think it was December. Right. Yeah. So it came out around then and he, 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 he wanted to do it. So he made like whatever it was, 500 copies and it came out real nice. Like it's lovely sort of like double album with loads of information and some like, like a sort of a ludicrously long, small text story that no one can read because the words are too small <laughs> and i don't know I, ju- I just think it's really nice and it's actually even got another song on it that wasn't on the cassette um but yeah and i don't know i really like it who is uri clangers is that a real person or is this some joke that i'm missing okay it's 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 not a real person but it's um uh it's sort of a play on uh, the fact the first 10 years of the band were sort of reasonably uh, overindulgent, uh, debauchery wise. And at the time, Yuri was just rhyming slang for Stella. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Slanger was like, we often like, like every band will write a song and it won't have a name for a while. And then you, you give it a nickname name. Until the real name comes along. So we would often have songs like C Clanger. Cause it'd be in C and it would just clang away for a bit. Yeah. So consequently, the name was Yuri Clangers for that album. <laughs> and it was dedicated to him because that's the first 10 years. <laughs> and like the, 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 the face on it, I think it's just, I don't even know where that's come from. <laughs> that's a police mugshot. Or, I don't know. <laughs> Cause that was going to be my next question. I was going to be like, there's a picture of the guy, man. So who's the picture of? <laughs> That's actually quite funny. See, I love that shit. See that like in joke shit that you have with people. That's just the best stuff always, man. Actually, we've not told anyone that before, and no one. And to be fair, no one's ever asked either. I think people have just is that an exclusive? Paid no attention, and that's fine. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, my word, yeah. You heard yeah, it here first exactly. with Vlad, as always. Yes. <laughs> big news <laughs> but um, it's interesting as well because you mentioned like there was the cassette and that and what's kind of strange to me right I'm 31 right so like I'm in this kind of age where I remember cassettes when I was younger and they were just kind of a pain in the arse and I was kind of pleased when CDs came along yeah. and I, I've got a lot of vinyl so I understand the resurgence of vinyl but there's been this mad resurgence of like the cassette and like, what do you think about that? That yeah. was sort of just a sort of cassette movement or format. Well, I, I I'm I'm a huge fan of it, and I will tell you why. Because, so, I, I I'm of the age, so I'm obviously older than you, where I think that um, physical media um, is really really important. And if you're like a a new band, or even just like an ancient band like us that want to just do something you know like small but then have it available did have it available digitally as well i think just doing 50 cassettes is really nice because i think people like like buying things I, 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 I think it's like david bowie or whatever said that buying a digital download is like buying thin air <laughs> and i think that if you can go and buy buy a cassette just for a couple of quid because that's all they'll cost like it's just nice to have the physical thing and it'll come with a download normally and then you've and it's cheap and a new band can just knock up 50 and have them at their first bunch of shows or whatever but is it cheaper to knock up cassettes than it is to burn a bunch of cds i just well i just think there's a there's a nice 
there is a nice sound to them, but you can knock up a sort of a a professional quote unquote looking item with a cassette, whereas a CD kind of I, I like CDs, so don't get me wrong, I do like them, but I just think I don't know, there's something more uh, tactile, and the sound is more sort of sort of sc- appropriately scruffy for probably the sort of thing that's going on it. Hmm. And, and like they're super cheap and they look nice. I don't know. And like y- y- you can buy it and not play it. I mean, we've done how many cassettes have we done? Like about four, I think. In fact, there's a label in um, uh, Kuala Lumpur in um, yeah uh, called uh, uh, Cactus, and they got in touch and they put out 300 copies of In Black and Gold on cassette in their country. Wow. And and, and 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 sold them all, I think, or throw them all away. But I'm going to pretend at least they sold some. So they sold them all, and that's really good. But you know, so like as a format, certainly in maybe other countries as well, it's still. I don't know, I'm I'm fond of it. I wonder if it's something mm. that you know, like it's just that I haven't revisited it in a while because, like, my entire youth. So I sort of grew up in the nineties and stuff, and I always had a Walkman on me, and it was always with like a tape that I'd done myself. You know, my big brother's hi-fi had the high-speed dubbing thing, so you could copy from like one tape to another pretty easily before they stopped it. They put that thing in. You yeah, could, yeah. You know what I mean? So like, I was, I kind of that's why I always grew up listening to music kind of on tapes, but I think. After I became like a teenager and CDs became the thing and all the rest of it, and then I just like the idea. I just like I look back at tapes as being like that thing that was a pain in the arse to get to the next song, you know. Whereas even with like a vinyl, I can still drop the needle where it needs to be. But like I think I'm just thinking of it being a pain in the arse. But I don't really think I've revisited it as a format for a for a long time. If you know what I mean? No, it's it, yeah. It's, it's I I don't imagine it coming back in the. This- same way that say records have and uh, you know that's why people just do 50 of them i just think it's a good option they're cheap as hell i i don't know but then i like you know i like cds as well i like i like all physical media there's a lot of um like modern sort of uh grime or sort of um like even mainstream nowadays like hip-hop stuff like chance the rapper or the UK bunch like 67 who don't have any physical releases. You know, they've got like 10 million views online, like even more chance the rappers are absolutely enormous, but like no physical releases, you know, but you can pick up bootleg LPs that sound a bit like terrible. And I don't know. I sort of, I sort of sad for the fact that that's the choice that a lot of people are making. It's not hindering them in any way. It's just me as an old person would still buy the record. And I can't keep, I can't keep, I'm struggling to keep up with uh, like putting downloads or, or digital stuff onto a, well, as I said earlier, before we started all this, like I'm still an old school Nokia person. So I haven't <laughs> yeah, even I got like, like a smartphone or anything. <laughs> so I can't, I'm, I'm like way behind, you know, like, uh, it's almost like I got I got I got off I got off the conveyor belt like ten years ago and and just can't keep up now. So I sort of cry, you know, I'm sad that these acts don't have physical physical like releases. So but no, yeah. So I so if we played in um where did we play? We played Glasgow um last year sometime. And what the hell was that? One of the bands we played with was um, uh, people from the band Anxiety. Do you know that band? Uh, anxiety? Yeah. Um, I've always assumed they're from no, Glasgow. I'm not sure. But, um, they're like a punk rock sort of thing, and, and they're really good. But the, the support band that played with us that night um, were uh, members of that band. Anyhow, they had a cassette for sale, and like three of us bought it. Because if we'd have come away from that gig... Because they were excellent, and I cannot remember their name at the minute, which is really irritating. But if we'd have come away from that gig and not like picked up just the cassette, any physical thing, it would have, you know, it's obviously the name's obviously gone out of my mind now. But I would totally, it totally would have gone bypassed us. I just think 
physical releases, you know, no matter what format, I'm absolutely for it. So, sorry, I thought it was a rant, right? No, it was great. No, actually, that's what this is just what this show's all about. We, I like a good musical <laughs> rant, and that's what I'm all about, man. But, like, no, it's true, though. I mean, there's been a lot of shows where I've done the same thing, where I want something physical, something from the show that I can have, you know, that I remember. And it's the same with, like, I've got, like, a Kindle, like, the basic first version, but I basically never use it. I mean, like, if you could see me just now, I'm surrounded by books and records, you know, like, particularly with, like, all of records anyway, but really with books I mean I can read a book on a Kindle and it's good if you're travelling or something but I much prefer having the book in my hand the proper with the paper turning the pages and like wedging my fingers in between it it's just something about having the actual physical media that I think because that's so natural to us as humans to have something physical Mm. uh, that's why I think it will never end completely no 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 totally I think it grounds I think it like I don't know. It's like an, uh, we're, it's like we're being earthed. Somehow we're being more connected to the person that created it, rather than it being like zeros and ones thing flown at us. And like, and I think that if you've got, if you've bought uh, like a cassette, which m- maybe you might think is an inferior format, and you've got it there and it sits on your shelf, and like I'm looking at my shelf now, and I've got a big pile of records there, and I'm thinking that's reminded me now. I'm going to go and listen to you know, the thing that I'm looking at, you know, and it's reminded me to do it. Or if there's a book on the shelf and I'm looking up there and I'm thinking, oh, yeah. Like, and and, and also when, like, so say you're 31, right? So you probably bought, you probably bought a CD when you were 15 and it might have been like an at the driving CD or whatever it was. And it's on your shelf and you see it and it reminds you of being 15 and it reminds you of like life and it reminds you of all the people you knew at the time. And then you pick it up and you'll play it. Whereas I wonder, like I got two kids and they don't buy physical uh, music at all. And I wonder if when they're 31 or 40 and they look back, what they can watch, what they're going to look at, uh, what they're going to, I don't, I cannot get my head around how they're going to like what they're going to look at a blank shelf and not what want to listen to, the Megadeth album they bought or whatever the hell. And my oldest son does listen to Megadeth. So that's, but you know, awesome. like he's not, he's, he's not going to be in his mind. He's not going to go, Oh, I'm going to look at YouTube and be reminded what I did when I was 15. I can't see how it's going to, I think that's just me being old and not getting it. But, I can't get my head around. Yeah, I mean, so much of what you, so much of what you just said. I mean, like, I'm actually staring at my at the drive-in relationship of command CD that I did buy at the time. <laughs> so, like, you were, you know, well done. You know, you, you knocked <laughs> out there. Um, but, but it's true that with this internet and you know, with this internet, I sound older than I am. But like, we are like this. It's this thing where you're more connected than ever. But in a way, everyone's more isolated as well because like everyone's. I mean, it's not even the whole thing. Everyone's always it's glued to their phone. It's that they think that social media is reality. I think that's a lot of the problem because social media is not reality at all. It's yeah. Well, it's. Uh... Like, I'm not against it, and, and like, I'm not against progression, and I do think that I've probably discovered a lot of bands that I wouldn't have discovered without the internet. Like, yesterday, uh, I watched, um, what I like, I'm, I'm sort of addicted to watching those What's in My Bag things at Amoeba Records in, uh, LA and Hollywood and that. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but, um, yesterday, we were up with, uh, the main guy from the band Endless Boogie, and, um, he um he's an old like he's like quite an old boy so he's talking about records he bought like in the 70s and like every single one of them i hadn't heard of and like every single one of them i want to check out and if it wasn't for the fact that all this computer stuff's here i wouldn't have seen him talk about all this like totally underground like la rock or whatever and it all sounds so interesting i don't know like so, so there's benefits to it but you need to pick and i think you need to pick and choose and maybe, you know, end up trying to buy the physical format to remind yourself. Well, that's the thing. And I think it's interesting, though, like, cause even we talk about, like, the cassette thing. I mean, even Thurston Moore, not so recent, not so long ago, released, like, cassette releases and stuff like that. So there's even people that are sort of, like, you know, bigger, but still, yeah. you know, 
I mean, let's let's not call Sonic Youth Underground for fuck's sake. Right? <laughs> like, you know, there's people that are much no, but that you know that like they're a reasonable example though because every single person in that band or that X band all all do quite underground sounding things off their own back, don't they? And you know, Thurston Moore probably does do a cassette with fifty copies because it's probably just him sort of like grinding his guitar with a screwdriver for an hour. But you know, there's no harm, there's, there's no harm in fifty cassettes being made of it because there be people interested. <laughs> That's the thing, though. But that, I suppose that is the important, like, yeah, uh, physical media. And like I said, I mean, I don't think it'll ever die die out. Like exactly. I mean, I know people are using more and more of these, more and more electrical devices. And like I said, I'm not against. That. I'm not like a luddite or anything like that. I use a lot of this stuff myself. But I just, I, I don't really see it. I don't see it completely dying out because it hasn't even now. I mean, there's still bookshops around. And actually, see, to be honest, see the whole thing about, like, you know, books on your Kindle, that's actually been good because it's driven some of those big extortionate bookshops out of business. And now I can go to a lot of these excellent independent and secondhand bookshops and get great yeah. books for, like, a fraction of the price that those, like, borders when it was in business used to cost. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, well, that's s- smart, isn't it? I think, um, you see, I, I think that, there's a chance that you've got um like all your big supermarkets are, are like sort of destroying certain level of music shops and bookshops, which is really, really unfortunate. But your big supermarkets are only selling top 40 things or, you know, like uh, like big books like Dan Brown or whoever the hell writing these big books nowadays and the same with music. So. But so I think that the, the shops that hopefully will survive, be it online or like, you know, high street ones, will have to be sort of very specialist that people have to travel to get to. And you'll, you know that like 20 miles away, there's the best record shop or there's the exact bookshop you want that's completely excellent. That's 20 miles away. I'm going to drive to it. I'm going to get a bus to it. I'm going to go to that shop. And, and like, you know, this, the real specialist places will survive, I hope. That would be nice. No, I think they will, because I think there's enough people that are still, I mean, like, the vital resurgence has been, you know, quite a thing, but I know what it's like. It's like, you kind of, like, you go into, like, I've not I've not been into, like, HMB or one of these places in a long time, but, like, uh, I know that what they're, basically, they're, they've started, like, reissuing all these old classic albums on vinyl now and featuring them and stuff like that, which is, you know, kind of interesting, but, like, it's still... You know, like I prefer to get my vinyl from, you know, I buy my vinyl online. You know, I've got I've got a grape out of these big music shops. I'm one of those annoying guys. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. No, I like I like to I like to try and go fairly direct to the source, be it the label or the band. I, I must admit, I quite like. I feel like you're sort of supporting in a better way if you go direct. But I think shops are brilliant. I, I you know I I love standing in a record shop or talking to the people in them and. I don't know. I could talk for, I could talk for forever about this sort of stuff, and it would, um, I don't know. The shop would close around me whilst I was standing there talking. <laughs> like, that, like that. Have you ever seen that episode of, have you ever seen that episode of Father Ted when they're all trying to get get away from the really boring vicar guy, and he ends up just talking. <laughs> In the broom cupboard on his own. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he, he was like, I uh, was like, and they had to crash the car to claim the insurance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's me. Yeah, going. Yeah, on cassette. First and was it cassette, and, and there was three hundred of them. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember there was that weird scene where he's like, we had to run the gas off the electricity and the electricity off the gas. <laughs> <laughs> and is it not the point when he actually. I'm just going to do it. I'm sorry, listeners, but I'm doing it. Fuck you. There's a bit when he turns around. If anyone hasn't seen it, there's like a kind of throw rug of Jesus on the sofa and everyone leaves him and he turns around and kind of looks at the Jesus one. He goes, ah, it's yourself. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> oh, brilliant. But watch how I do a segue. I'm that good. So you guys are talking about like vinyl. You're doing a release of RRR or as I prefer to say, in March, I believe, and there's a pre-order on. So, why did you choose that one to do a re, like a repressing of it? Um, uh, that's um, Riot Season. The label um, 
released it originally. Um, when was that? Like 2011, I think. And um, we did uh, like it was on CD and he wasn't keen on doing vinyl. At the time, but we sort of persuaded him. And what happened then was that he just did 250 copies of it on vinyl and um, we had to make the sleeves. So we got this artist uh, down here in Somerset. And for three months, she painted up 250 sleeves for it. There's like a couple of websites that you can go on and look at all the pictures. And they're really, really excellent. She she sort of like did an absolutely bang up job with it. Like and, and the thing is, is they just sold really quickly. And um, within like a month or two, like the 250 were gone and um, which is quite quick for us. And then um, and then they just didn't exist for. Six years on vinyl. And like we we get asked for it quite a bit, and then Andy gets asked for it quite a bit at riot season, so he's like right balls to it. We'll just do another one. We'll just repress it, and um this time it's like the album as it was, plus an extra twelve inch which has different different versions of the songs and whatnot, and even a song that never made it onto the album for whatever reason. So it's like a double album this time, so it's twice as long and. I, I'm quite looking forward to having it, actually. I think it's going to be quite nice to have it available again. And we love having like a well sort of stocked merch table and people come and, you know, hang out and spill their beer on it and whatnot. I love that. Um, <laughs> but because and, Andy also, uh, Riot Season also reissued or for the first time, um, uh, Happy Birthday, which he'd done on CD only a few years before around 2000 and whenever seven or eight or whatever um that was just on cd so he's so he did that on vinyl last year um for the first time i don't know it's quite nice it's quite nice that people are at least vaguely interested so yeah it's not you know it's good well, of course you know, uh, uh, it was a great album mm-hmm. like uh, 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 it sort of intrigues me that someone who might have say just got the last record might then see this and go, I'll get that. And then they get it. And it's sort of quite dramatically different, I guess. But I think that's a good thing, you know? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, that's, that's the thing. I know what you mean. It is like, but that's the whole point. I mean, like if, like if you're, if you're one of these bands that like people are going to get you because you like, I think because you've, like expanded and changed your sound you know what i mean the kind of like thing that you guys do it's the more kind of it's what i call kind of music guy stuff it's like to put it in other terms it's like you know they say like you know like bill hicks is the comedian's comedian it's that kind of thing there is like music guys music if you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. If I'm making myself clear, I mean, people that are just obsessed by music, you know, you see these people all the time, you know what I mean? I know, like, all my friends are the same, you know, they're just, and that's the funny thing, we're talking about the internet and stuff, and that's what I think it can be a good thing, because the people I know, like, and I, myself included, will use things like Spotify and iTunes and stuff, but when we find a band we like, then we will go, we'll find them, and we'll physically buy their stuff, like, from their website, their band camp, or whatever. Um, yeah. So there is a community of people, and I know there's people all over that do that. So it's really kind of good that way. No, I, I, I absolutely. That's what I, I mean. That's what I was saying about the um, watching that. What's in my bag? Endless boogie guy. Yesterday, is it totally made me want to go out and check out everything? And there is certainly, you know, some people might just just want to listen to it on Spotify, and that's fair enough. And some of us, you know, quite like hunting down the records or following it up, you know. Yeah, no, absolutely, and I suppose it's just, you'll always get that kind of thing, it's the same, I assume it's the same thing, whereas I just watch films on Netflix, I assume some guy's doing, like, a film podcast right now, and he's raging about guys that just watch films on Netflix and Amazon, and he's like, they don't even have the VHS or the Betamax, and I'm raging about that, you know, like, I assume yeah. that's probably happening. No, well, that's, that is true, because that's me, although I do go to cinema, you know, I, I do go to cinema, but I do watch on Netflix. But you pay to do Netflix, don't you? Like, it does. I guess it costs. Oh, yeah. I I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I can see, I totally see your point, though, where here I am, exactly like you, like, getting angry. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, and now I'm, then I, oh, there I'm I am. Not, I'm not criticised, you know, and I don't want you to think that. I'm just having a bit No, of no, no, now I'm, I'm sad. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> 
let's not be sad about this because it's a good thing because there is people that like now we can find stuff that we couldn't find before you know what i mean like for without the internet i couldn't do this show and i mean when i was younger let's like the thing i used to love watching was bh1's behind the music you know i've said this a bunch of times and yeah, yeah. then when i was like i used to do a bit of podcasting and radio and stuff years ago and then when i decided to start to do a podcast again i was like I'm going to do my own behind the music, but with the bands I really like that you never hear about, because that's how it, like, a lot of these bands I like, you know, like, it's, there's a, there is a, there is a big fan base of them worldwide, but you never really hear them speak a lot of the time, just in, like, a, an interview, and I kind of like that sort of thing, you know, I think it's good to fit some, you know, some narrative to the music. No, no, I'm into it, I, I listen to all sorts, watch all sorts online. Yeah, I, I'm, like, obsessed with certain I always watch, uh, like, a sort of a King Buzzer or Steve Albini interviews, for instance. Uh, like, I find. Oh, him, yeah. Steve Albini's great, isn't he? <laughs> yeah, I just find it like he seems to sort of just cut through the industry with, like, a, you know, he may have his flaws, but god damn, he's entertaining. <laughs> you know, and I believe, you know, I, I, was what, it not? You know, half, half the stuff he says, I think, is really interesting, you know? Like, I think he's sort of spot on with a lot of stuff, you know? Was it not him? Maybe I'm getting them confused with someone. Was it not him that said that um, record labels used to take a damages fee off the band that was so heavy it would be the equivalent to someone taking an axe to the records? Like, <laughs> it actually, yeah, no, that does sound like him. It does sound like him. Yeah, yeah. I think that was him. That was uh, that was hilarious. That guy is great. He's so funny. And then he's got the he's got the producer record to back himself up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And they, you know, apparently if he'd have taken like a single percentage point on what, what Nirvana album did he do? Like in utero or whatever. Was it in utero? Yeah. If he'd have taken a single point on it, uh, like he would have been made for life or whatever. I think he just took a flat fee, so that screwed him. Oh, really? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I didn't know that. But anyhow. I was in utero, correct. Yeah. Yeah. But that, um, like I, I, I briefly worked at um, Southern Records in London, and uh, I worked there for free for about three months when I was about eighteen, just to sort of learn about things. And I was just so keen on music, so I worked there. And they did like all Discord and Touch and Go and all those labels. And for two weeks, I spent uh, my only job was putting uh, the uh, records for Terraform like the second shellac album, into their sleeves. That was my job for two weeks. And it, that's how long it took to insert all the vinyl into the sleeves. And um, I don't know if you own that record, but the sleeve is like super heavy. So by the end of the two weeks, my sort of fingernails were pouring with like blood. And about 50% of those records in this country have got my blood on the inside. So if you've got that record... <laughs> Have a little look at the inside of the sleeve because it's got some blood in it. <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> that man made me bleed for his music. <laughs> that is unbelievable. You own his DNA. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. What baffles me about records is I have no idea how they work. Like, I put it on and, like, the needle does its thing and then it gets to the end and for the whole of the 20 minutes all this noise has been coming out of the speakers and I'm looking at the record thinking... Okay, <laughs> what's just happened? And, and I can't get my head around it. And, and 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 it's one of them things that even if it gets explained to me, you could like, if you're like a super intelligent bloke and you go to me, okay, what happens is like the vibrations go through the needles and through the wires and come out the speakers. It still makes no sense to me. I still have absolutely no idea what's happened. Yeah, everything seems like a miracle. Like you know what I mean? Like how does that little needle make that sound? And uh, the thing is, it kind of—I think it goes back to that Joe Rogan joke when he was saying like he was talking about like humanity in general. He's like, we've got a lot of people, we've got a lot of dumb people using smart things. And he's like, I'm not saying that everyone here is stupid. It's just that if I threw you out in the woods with only an axe, how long before you emerge with an iPhone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah well this is it it's i don't know i'm just gonna stay in ignorance and just enjoy it for what it is so like uh, as we're drawing to the close of the interview as we are <laughs> i've very much enjoyed this conversation we could probably talk forever show it's, it's really been fun 
<laughs> you got to. Ma- I tell you what, you got to make sure next time we come to Scotland. No, I will be there. No, believe me, I'm going to be there. But we're not finished yet. So, where is what's the future for Hey Colossus? Um, yeah, we've got plans. We, we've got um, March. We're playing uh, Cardiff and London at the uh, Rocket Rocket Records 20th anniversary, um, which. Uh, it's like three days at the garage in North London. And like, it's like Nod, T for the C, Pigs. Do you know that band? Pigs, Pigs, Pigs. pigs I was going to say that. Oh, yeah, I was going to say there's not enough Pigs. I know the one that's Pigs, 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 Pigs. <laughs> I don't know, just Pigs. <laughs> and yeah, they, they, you know, they, yeah, exactly. Pigs times seven. Like they, they, you know, they, they rip it up, whatever. And like, we're, uh, we're playing the Saturday night at that and they're on before us and Goat are on after us. And it just feels like we're uh, going to be like the the total sort of we, we need to sort of up our game a little <laughs> in between those two bands, and also get some form of animal related, <laughs> which we don't have. The masks from the Englishman video—they were animal masks. You could get the unicorn one and the lion one and all that. <laughs> they do, don't they? Yeah. No. Well, anyhow, so I know there, your manager. That, then, <laughs> that we got four shows with the band Grey Hairs. Uh, do you know Grey yeah, Hairs? Them, yeah, they're a good band. Yeah. Uh, they're a decent band on Gringo. Yeah, they're really good. Um, so we're going to go to uh, France and Belgium with them in March. And then we're going to play Liverpool and Preston and Manchester and a bunch of other places. we got a fair bit lined up. Plus, we're always beavering away uh, as well because, you know, we like releasing music and whatnot. And it gives us an excuse to travel and meet good folk. So that's what we like doing. Absolutely, Joe. And like I said, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I've really enjoyed the conversation, and I really enjoyed talking to you. Like, especially like, see, getting into the stuff like the physical media thing and all that sort of stuff. Like, that really interests me, and I talk a lot about that kind of thing. Like, and uh, ask people a lot of questions about it because the way the music industry's uh, been changing is quite interesting to me. You know, we're going from you know, like a physical like world to like a streaming world and stuff like that. So I've always found that stuff quite interesting, you know? No, I, well, it fascinates me. It, I, I'm, I'm like a, I'm a nerd for all of the music industry. Like even like things I don't like or things I do like, like I don't necessarily like, uh, uh, what's his face is music. Um, the really popular Ginger Guy, Solo, Loop Pedals, Wembley Stadium, Ed Sheeran. I don't, my, I might not like his music, but I'm fascinated by how he's got so big. Like, you know, he was doing 200 shows a year. So it's not like he appeared from like totally nothing. And he's just so damn big. And now he's got a song with Eminem and all that. It absolutely fascinates me. Man, I thought we were finished, but we were not finished because like, like, no, no, that is absolutely true. I've always thought that as well. I've been like, what is the thing? Like, a lot of bands have really liked, like, over the years and stuff. Like, I've thought, what is the thing? Um, what is the thing that makes me like them? But then, what is the thing that makes some people like, like, why is it like a band like Radiohead, uh, become huge? Whereas ones that are, there's bands that are maybe sort of similar at the same time that were coming out. What is it about them? You know, like, that kind of thing has always interested me, and not even that, even in a broader scope, like, in political ideas that are put out in certain ways in the media, what is it that wins over masses of people? That's always been a fascinating yeah. question, if he, you know. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's the X Factor thing, and I have absolutely no idea. It's, it, it, but, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I like to study it, I've got, I read, you know, I'm fascinated by it. Like, you know, a, you know, Adele and whatnot. Like she can sing like hell, of course, but still, she's so damn big. It amazes me. But it's shape. Like, but yeah, well, whatever. It's not. It's not. It's, it's just. <laughs> but it is. It's like, but, but but it's not even. That's clever. not my opinion. That's you know, sub- not, like, that's objective. It's not subjective. It's you know, uh, uh, just I don't <laughs> understand. It's fact, right? You're saying fact. But that's the thing. But like, no, the thing. <laughs> so who? Right. So <laughs> go. Who's who? Tell me who who's who's the biggest who's the, the biggest band that you the like? The biggest band that I like. Do you mean historically or currently? Okay, let's go current. Um, the biggest band that I like, current. Well, 
Right, the Smashing Pumpkins were always my favourite band growing up, and they're technically still going, but that's not the Smashing Pumpkins, that's Billy Corgan and a bunch of other people, and him embarrassing himself. But, like, <laughs> yeah. but, um, no, I can't think of who the biggest, um, uh, the biggest current band I like are, a. Uh, let's just even go with something like Nine Inch Nails. Right. Yeah, so it, but it's quite, but, you know, like, they, they would have got to the, the size they are. By doing some things that maybe ethically you might think is wrong or whatever, like if you think Adele or Ed Sheeran, I don't, I'm like I, I, I would say for me it's like Kendrick Lamar maybe, I'm a huge fan of his, and I think he's enormous, and it, it fascinates me how it's happened. I just I love it, and I think like with your Smashing Pumpkins or whatever, I just think it's I don't know, it, fa- it fascinates me. That, that, that this happens and it's and, and I love the fact that there's the huge music industry and then there's the music industry that sort of isn't really a music industry that just bubbles underneath that but it's there yeah you know bands can ex- in, exist in a different way and go to Glasgow and play to 100 people or whatever I love that as well, well that's I'm the whole thing I mean like I'm going to start no, they both yeah, I'm going to start doing this kind of serious thing that's something for the future but I'm going to talk about this but like because one time someone had said something ludicrous to me about, like, bands are only good if they're big. And I was like, oh, my God. So, like, let me let me overwhelm you with the evidence that proves <laughs> the contrary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, Joe, I've well, taken yeah. up, like, an hour of your time. <laughs> like, I could probably talk to you for about five more. Um, but I've really enjoyed the conversation, Joe. Thanks so much for coming on the show, man. It's been great. Oh no, it's been good fun. It's been it's been a lot of lot of fun. So thank you very much. So my thanks once again to Joe for coming on the show. I I love the banter personally. So that is your lot for this week. Thank you for listening. And a special thank you to the people who have reached out so far. It is very encouraging. And a big shout out to the band Rare Form for sending me two copies of the vinyl version of their album Six Months in Hiding. It's a great album. Get it listened to. Listen to our conversation. It was episode 8. That was a really good show as well. So, the website, as always, is bresnix.com. I will spell it. B-R-E-S-N-I-X dot com. And also, give me a follow on Twitter, at Vladimir Bresnix. So, since I was in charge of the music, I was really tempted to put Hot Grave in here at the end. But since the guillotine is the recent album, and we're chatting about it, and I am a professional. So I'm going to stay on message. So, from the guillotine, and featuring the saxophone stylings of none other than Nick Turner from Hawkwind, here is Hey Colossus with Back in the Room. (laughs) 